Hi again. In this session, we'll look at the basic concepts in social security, uh, social security financing that are frequently used in the in the field of social security. Just to connect it with the previous lessons, what I wanted you to remember this uh, cube because it summarizes the three main objectives of social protection in general. One, as we mentioned, that we need to extend the coverage, the contingencies, and we said the ILO Convention 102 has nine contingencies here, so old age, maternity, and others. The second one, we need to expand coverage of uh, uh, all vulnerable groups. We need to make sure that no one left behind. And then we said it's also like the Convention 102, we need to increase the replacement ratio or the adequacy of benefit. You need to provide benefit that is meaningful. And what the third objective actually of the of this uh, of, uh, of like this cube tells us is that cost containment. So we need to make sure that the cost containment of the system, because once you expand this, you expand this, and you go up, the volume or the cost of the system will explode. And we need to look at certain terms that is used in social protection to this. Just allow us to to understand these uh, concepts in an easy to understand way. Is the first one is the coverage ratio, which we talked about it, right? We said we wanted to increase coverage ratio. So if you look at those definitions here, and we try to match uh, uh, the term, each term we have here, we wanted to match it with uh, the definition here. So coverage ratio, we talked about it, so we need to see how the beneficiaries to the underlying population, right? So if you talk about old age coverage, you look at the ones they receive the social pension or the old age pension or any pension or any form of pension divided by the age group that in the retirement age. If the retirement is 65 and above, so we take the number of beneficiaries divided by the population 65 and above. Dependency ratio, uh, this is demographic term. So in demography, when you use dependency ratio, in general, we take like the dependence, so divided by the working age population. In other words, for every working population, how many dependents? So, and this is very important in the discussion about the demographic transition. If the country is aging fast, then we see the old age dependency. So the dependents will be those who are old age relative to the working age population. We might talk about child dependency ratio. So child dependency ratio, the dependents will be children divided by the same group population 16, uh, 15 to 64, the working age population. Benefit ratio. If you remember, this is the vertical axis. The benefit ratio is the benefit amount divided by the average wage, right? So this this uh, ratio here. And the last one is, you know, it can be said in different way, but I just wanted to simplify to say employment ratio is the employed persons relative to the working age population. What is the employment uh, of, of uh, the working age population? So this excludes uh, the ones that they are not seeking employment uh, because of maybe students, maybe they not in the labor market altogether, uh, people uh, not in the labor market uh, uh, altogether. So what I wanted to link this to the volume, remember the volume of uh, the cube, uh, how it explodes. I wanted to link these coverage, uh, these ratios to the total benefit to GDP, you know, like the volume of the or the cost containment that we are looking at. So we can link them all together in very easy to understand. If you take coverage ratio, and this is something I want you to remember it, multiply by dependency ratio. Uh, let me zoom it a little bit so we get extra space. Then benefit ratio. And then now let's multiply these ratios together. And let's divide also by employment ratio. And this is this equation is very very important. It's very important to understand it. So the cost of like the cube, the cube that we uh, discussed, is it explodes or the cost increases with any of these ratio. So if you and this is where it becomes a struggle because in in as we know like uh, the essence of the SDG of uh, no one left behind, we need to increase coverage. We don't need to leave anyone behind. Let's say if we're talking about old age 
protection. So we don't want to have any senior citizens not protected for the longevity risk. So they receive a form of pension, right? So now you expand your coverage and you want the benefit to be maintained to a certain level, the benefit ratio. But what we see in other countries that also at the same time you have dependency ratio because of the old age phenomenon, especially if you think of Europe, for instance, is the dependency ratio is uh, 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 increasing due to demography. So now, but you want to increase also coverage ratio or maintain coverage ratio. So many countries in Europe, but they, you know, it's not, uh, they don't want to exclude anyone. So coverage ratio, we wanted to maintain it. So they tried, you know, like to look at benefit ratio, see if, you know, like create an indexation method or a way or another to make sure that the benefit uh, is reduced. But there is also like all countries, they need to look, of course, they look at employment ratio. And now this is critical because, you know, benefit ratio, you cannot cut it too much or actually you cannot cut it altogether because it's kind of entitlement you know it will create riots and we've seen in the news many countries that when they touch pension it creates riots so this one kind of uh, you cannot touch it very much the benefit ratio so then you deal with it with the employment ratio you need and the employment ratio remember that the age 65 uh, people are employed in this age group so Obviously, women participation in the labor market is critical, and that's why we see emphasis on increasing uh, female participation in the labor market. Obviously, also for this group, uh, but you know, Europe, it's, uh, historically, they reached uh, a, a, good, a high level in most OECD countries in uh, uh, female labor force participants. But it also becomes persons with disability. You need them to be part of the uh, employment uh, sector. You know, you need them to be contributing meaningfully to the labor market uh, as well. Uh, so you start reaching out to these groups, marginalized groups. You try to bring them into the labor market. So the, this ratio, if it increases, then this one will decrease because it's reversely related, right? So you need to the, the employment ratio. Another option for this one it's actually it's very good option where you see many countries uh, did is you increase retirement age let's say from 65 to 67 so you add two years when you add two years what happens the employment ratio increases right because now the group of 65 to 67 they used to be dependent or not in the labor market now they are working so employment ratio increases what's beautiful about it is also this one increases so it's double win. So because you have an increase in the denominator, an increase in the numerator, so it will have double, uh, uh, sorry, dependence ratio, I mean decreases, sorry. Now, because you have numerator in, uh, decreases, numerator de uh, increases, so what will have double effect on the cost containment. So uh, this is quite uh, interesting, you know, like you see it in, in many countries, but at least, you know, if the country is facing demography, at least one, this one will counter this one slightly, right? So it's very important. This equation is critically important because it helps us to understand like the policy options for government we, uh, uh, w when we looked at this EQ. So you can increase this one, you can increase this one, you can increase this one. What you need to do for cost containment? It helps you to balance, to balance. So if you want to increase uh, uh, benefit ratio, maybe you need to increase, increase employment, increase age of retirement, so you can play with the parameters. But related to this discussion now, let's say we found that uh, total benefit to GDP, if we talk about social pension, in, for instance, that based on, you know, like the parameters we have, total benefit to GDP is 10%, 5%, 2%. Uh, in low income countries maybe have percent it depends on uh, the social protection arrangements the country you know like these parameters the question now how to finance it and the options are available let's look at contribute contribution contribution uh, or ta similar to taxes deducted directly from the employee employers you know from the payroll a deduction that can be uh, uh, kept or, or you know funding the needs for the senior citizens at the current cohort or kept for the future right so they could this is contributory other models is general tax financing and general tax we tax today for how much we need to cover our uh, retirement needs today right so contribution rate it's you can think about it contribution rate is direct tax 
and general tax it you can spread it you can you know use value add tax you can use mixed options and you know the choice between them i mean countries mix between them and the choice between them is critical you know like uh, contribution it's obviously it's very good uh, you know to create linkages between somebody saving you know your contribution and your uh, entitlement but because of you know like now working age population to uh, is decreasing in many countries like i'll give you example in malaysia in 2000 you would have four employee uh, you would have 16 employees for each senior citizen in 2020 it's not 16 it becomes 10 and in 2050 it will be four so if you keep increasing the contribution rate the payroll you you would have to increase it and increase it and increase it so it becomes you know the labor market will become less and less competitive but the option you know many countries facing this reality is to spread it to a wider uh, population segment so it will not be cost directly to the labor and the competitiveness but of course there are many other parameters related to this you so we talked about contribution we'll come back to it in the other sessions general taxation as well but there are also discussion yet that you would hear that pay as you go rate so if we let's say we're looking at contribution contributory social protection and we decided to choose what method pay as you go it's simply that uh, the contribution rate will be determined every year based on the need of every year so the year of the current senior citizen is let's say this person uh, this amount so then we tax or payroll or contribution rate we set it to meet to, uh, this year's uh, uh, need and what you would expect that pay as you go it's uh, it fluctuates it's not good for predictability in the, uh, of the uh, of the labor market so it fluctuates year to year and you know it's politically it's not uh, something easy to keep increasing or decreasing or changing the tax code so the other option is to use either defined benefit or defined contribution rate uh, what it's the like the other method you know if you don't want to pay pay as you go is you take the actuarially balanced uh, value so you take a cohort a cohort of somebody entering the market labor market today at the age of 15 uh, that person will uh, leave the labor market for retirement at age 65 so you take a cohort maybe 50 years sometimes longer and you say uh, you say what contribution rate i will take that will balance the system over this 50 years so instead of every year the pay as you go now you take a longer you know country is different you might sometimes you know like you you have a gradual contribution rate you start with lower rate and you keep increasing it over the horizon but the idea is that one is you pay as you go what you need the other is you take the actuarially balanced uh, contribution rate that will uh, uh, will balance the system in a longer period so you maintain the tax fixed and that will include saving because you know pay as you go you don't include the save, saving stream of income to the pension fund but this one because you take a longer period the contribution today can be invested in and bringing in uh, also a uh, return on investment the discussion between defined benefit and defined contribution is critical defined benefit is you are promised you know you enter in the labor market to work uh, uh, most informal sector so you uh, uh, you uh, the law will uh, say that you need to pay this contribution rate it's divided usually between you and your employer uh, the defined uh, we're talking about defined benefit and the benefit will be defined at retirement so you in for uh, so you are promised to receive a pension or a certain specific benefits not only pension work related injuries many other benefits you will be promised a, uh, the benefit uh, you know it what benefit i will get it's based on your contribution uh, record how many years but you know you, you know the formula for sure how much you should uh, get you know the everything about it it's based usually on the last or the index wage last uh, uh, yeah, wage or uh, average of uh, last few years of wage so the defined benefit you are promised you are promised this uh, amount defined contribution you're not a promised you actually the contribution rate is defined today but you're not defined your benefit is not defined it's based on how much you save how much you accumulate so it's based on you know like the re return on investment 
So this one, if the return on investment is solid, then you accumulate more. So if uh, the, there, there is no return on investment, then you lose the stream of income, only your contribution. So your contribution, uh, you and your employer, based on it, based on how much you were able to uh, save and based on the investment that uh, the return on investment, you can get the benefit amount. So the benefit is not promised, but here, they, they find benefit regardless of the investment. It's actually you promise. You promise that uh, uh, that benefit. We'll talk this uh, discussion a step further uh, next session when we talk about uh, how we can arrange or what are the options for extending coverage uh, of social protection as well as related to gender dimension to uh, protection.